afternoon all. Now I've just bought myself a Turnigy Accucell 8150 and uh, what this is is a battery charger typically used for radio controlled models. Now the type of batteries this can charge are all listed here below the display so we have what looks like Lilo but it isn't it's Li-Io so that's lithium ion lithium polymer lipo and lithium iron phosphate or lifi now the interesting thing about this charger is that it can charge um, batteries with one to eight cells now these things are very common in one to six cell format but i particularly wanted uh, up to eight cells because that's what i think i'm going to have in my electric bike project um, so moving on it can also charge nickel metal hydrides NICADs, uh, anywhere from 1 to 27 cells in series, and it can also charge lead acid batteries, PB, uh, from 2 to 36 volts. So now let's have a look at these items here. The input can be anywhere from 11 to 18 volts, and it says 4 amps plus, whatever that means. Uh, it can charge anywhere from 0.1 amps to 7 amps, so 100 milliamps to 7 amps maximum. It can discharge from 100 milliamps to 5 amps maximum. It has a maximum output of 150 watts. So that if you're charging a high voltage, you're not going to be able to have high current and high voltage at the same time. That limits that. And then there's this interesting thing here. It says it has a USB link V2.0. But if you turn it to the side where the USB connector is meant to be here, it isn't. So although it says on the front panel that there's a USB link, there actually isn't. Now looking at the right hand side of the unit, we've got the input cables here, which are about, uh, I don't know, half a meter long and terminated in crocodile clips. I'll show those in just a minute. And then you have the balance charging sockets, uh, three cells, four cells, five, six, seven, uh, seven's up there actually, and eight cells down here. And on the left hand side we have the output terminals. These are four millimeter gold plated by the look of it, banana terminals. And there's also a temperature sensor on what looks like the type of plug that uh, servo motors are usually connected up with. Now this device is uh, described as a DC charger. So you don't plug it in to the mains you connect it, and I've done so with the supplied crocodile clips, to a 12 volt battery. Now I'm using my car jump starter unit here. It just happens to have two uh, screw terminals, which you'd normally connect these enormous crocodile clips to when you're jump starting a car. But I've connected the two croc clips that come with the Turnigy to those two terminals. And that's what has enabled me to power this thing up. Now supplied with the Turnigy are three cables with uh, all with XT60 connectors on them. This one here, I believe, is uh, something J a JST power connector. I believe it is. That looks like um, a 0.1 inch pitch there. Now also we have the connector which has the uh, banana plugs on. Now these are going to plug into the output connectors on the unit itself, those ones there, and that terminates in an XT, what would that be, plug or socket? I don't know, plug probably. And then the other one is the opposite of that, an XT socket I guess that is, which goes to some more uh, crocodile clips. So by connecting the banana plugs into the output terminals of the charger and uh, hooking these two XT60 connectors together, so that that cable is terminated in uh, croc clips, I'm now ready to charge something. So what I'm going to do to make this nice and simple is I'm going to charge a lead acid battery. So here's my little lead acid battery. Now I have a voltmeter on here which will help me to uh, see what's going on. I've connected the positive and negative croc clips to that. Now this is a 12 volt 4.5 amp hour uh, gel sealed lead acid battery. So what I'm going to be doing here is charging this small gel lead acid battery 
from this large gel lead acid battery. It's a little bit pointless, but it will just give me a chance to uh, try my hand at uh, using the Turnergy. Now there was no paperwork at all supplied with this uh, charger, so what I've done is I've downloaded the uh, user manual, the operating manual, and I've had a little bit of a wade through that. Um, interesting actually that the operating manual also shows this uh, USB connector lead, and if you scroll through the manual it shows the USB port, but of course on my one it doesn't exist. Now I'm still a little bit baffled by these menus. Um, I do have the uh, program flowchart uh, up f uh, in the manual, but it's a little bit, um, I don't know, counterintuitive or not very intuitive. But it seems that if I press stop, it goes through, now can we see that very well? I've reduced the brightness of the uh, display. I might increase that in a moment. LiPo. Nickel metal hydride, NICAD, PB. So that's lead. Now if I press start, we've got the charge current. If I press that, I can change that. So 0.4 amps. Uh, this battery is fairly well charged, so I'll reduce that a bit, say 300 milliamps. And 12 volts. Now that's saying 6P, 6 uh, cells for a lead acid battery, does that mean? but that's the nominal voltage, 12 volts, so that's okay. And then you press and hold start to actually start charging. It checks the voltage on the battery, and now we're underway. I'll see if I can improve the quality or the contrast on this display. So charging of the uh, small lead acid battery is underway, and it's fairly rapidly come up to 14.7 volts. Now, if I press deck, uh, while it's charging, it tells me that the end voltage is 14.7 volts. But it doesn't seem to have actually terminated charging because, because it's still counting up here. This is the time, minutes and seconds. This, I assume, is milliamp hours, so just six. Uh, and it's still in charge mode. It's not in any sort of uh, trickle mode. Now somewhere in the menu, and I can't find it at the moment, it did say that the trickle current was 50 milliamps. So I'm not entirely sure why it hasn't stopped charging uh, when it's reached 14.7 volts. And the battery itself is just bobbing up and down between about 14.65 and 14.68. So to my mind, that should have terminated. Oh well, let's try something else. So the next thing I thought I'd try is to charge this nickel metal hydride 9 volt battery. Now, I realise that this is a radio control model type charger. This is not really the type of battery that it's designed to charge. But it does seem to be able to do it if I set it to nickel metal hydride. Now in here, all we have for adjustment is the current. So the lowest current I can charge it is 0.1 amps, that's 100 milliamps. Now this is a 220 milliamp hour battery, so 100 milliamps should be fine, that's okay. Now there's a thing here, man, and in the user guide it says that there's an auto and a manual selection, but actually there doesn't appear to be, because you've got nickel metal hydride discharge, cycle, manual, and then it's supposed to have auto, but auto doesn't seem to be there. Anyway, let's start the charging process. That's presumably checking how many cells there are in order to get this voltage right. And um, the voltage is creeping up, 9.47, about 9.5 nine volts. And then it just seems to turn this current from 100 milliamps to zero and uh, the voltage drops down. So that's gone to zero amps. The voltage is now dropping down accordingly, 9.4, and then it switches the current back on to 100 milliamps, and it just seems to uh, cycle between the two. So again, a little bit mystified as to how this is supposed to be operating. It does seem to be charging the battery, but uh, not yet seen it terminate the charge. This was almost completely discharged, so 
maybe it would take a while. I'm not sure I'm feeling very confident to leave that on charge, uh, particularly seeing these high voltages. Now the, the other issue with these 9 volt batteries is that there are about three types. I think you can get 7.2 volt, 8.4 volt and 9.6 volt. This is probably 8.4 volt nominal. Uh, so how many cells would that be? 1.2 each. So that's seven cells, something like that. Anyway, it does seem to be charging it. So now let's move on to lithium. Now I'm just going to charge one single cell in one of these 18650 holders. I've got my wires here. I've got to be careful they don't touch together, but they're just connected there. Now these wires aren't very thick, so I'm going to charge this at a fairly low current. So let's see what we've got. If we go into here, we've got LiPo, and the voltage is 3.7. Alternatively, we've got um, lithium iron phosphate. Now that says 3.3. Well, I thought lithium iron phosphate had a nominal voltage of 3.2. So a little bit confused there. And we also have lithium ion at 3.6. Now again, lithium ion and lithium polymer, I wasn't aware that there was any actual difference in the chemistry. So this must be something to do with the way radio control enthusiasts refer to the different battery types. Now to add confusion to this, this is a lithium manganese battery, but it does say 3.7 volts. So I'm going to go with the LiPo 3.7 volts for this one. And uh, now I should be able to start. No, that doesn't do it. No, that's the wrong type. I haven't quite got to grips with this menu system yet. Let's go back to there. Um, so let's take the LiPo battery, start that. So we've got 0.5 amps, that's fine for these very fine wires. 3.7 volts and it's a single cell. So I guess I just start. Battery check. So it's telling me one cell in series one cell in series. Oh yes, that's what it, I think that's what it read and that's what I set. So confirm is enter. So lithium one cell, this is the current half an amp. This is the voltage. Now when this gets to, should be about 4.2 volts, the current should start dropping down because this is going to be in constant current initially, which is what we've got here, 0.5 amps, and then it should switch to constant voltage, so this should peak out, and then the current should start dropping down. Let's leave it for a while. Now, I've actually changed the setting here. I changed this to 1 amp because uh, I wanted to hit the constant voltage phase. We now have hit that, 4.2 volts. It won't allow the cell to go above that and it started to bring the current down. Now I think in this uh, simple charging program, uh, as I've got it set, this will come all the way down to a tenth of the nominal charge current. So my nom nominal charge current is one amp. This will keep charging until this figure here drops to 100 milliamps, or 0.1 amps. So I'll keep watching that for a little bit longer. Now I just found some interesting stuff. If I press the minus button, we get the end voltage 4.2 volts, uh, capacity cutoff 5000 milliamp hours, and I should have set that lower because this is a lower capacity than that. Um, what else have we got? Safety timer 120 minutes, temperature cutoff, well I don't have the temperature sensor, internal and external temperatures, and the voltage of the supply uh, battery, so that's my 12 volt lead acid battery and that's showing. 12.6, if I press plus, it shows me the voltage of each of the cells through the balanced charging ports. Now I'm not using the balanced charging ports, so of course they're all reading zeros, but uh, that's what happens when you press minus and plus while you're charging your cell. So it should drop out of that, or perhaps it won't. Yeah, perhaps I have to press that and then wait for the timeout. No, that's gone back to the balanced charging 
I have to find a way of getting out of that. Now I've just temporarily stopped charging to show some of these charging modes that are available. We've got LiPo charge, which will do the constant current and then switch to constant voltage and wait for it to drop to a tenth of the nominal. We've got LiPo balance. This will use the balance charging ports. We've got LiPo fast charge. Now what that does is it doesn't wait for the current to drop to a tenth of nominal. It only waits for it to drop to um, a fifth of nominal. So it uh, doesn't charge the battery quite so fully, but uh, it, it is a lot quicker. We've got LiPo storage that either charges or discharges the LiPo to set it to about a half charged um, condition if you're going to be storing the cell or storing the battery for a long period and not using it. And then the final one, we've got LiPo discharge and uh, presumably that will discharge it to a specific voltage that we choose. So that's a, a first look at the Turnergy AccuCell 8150 uh, balance charger, 150 watt balance charger and discharger. Now I'm going to do a second look at this where I focus very much more on charging lithium cells and particularly charging multi-cell uh, packs. Um, so we're going to be looking at the uh, balance charging ports and all the various complications that arise out of trying to use them.